is CBC News. Standing outside beautiful Nova Scotia on this nice warm day. Let's check it out. <laughs> this is CBC News. Nova Scotia lies in mid temperature zone surrounded almost entirely by the sea. Climate is closer to the marine time. Temperature in winter and summer extremes are moderated by the ocean. Halifax weathers July high of 23 degrees, low 14 degrees, and January is the high of zero degrees and the low of negative <coughs> eight degrees Celsius. This is CBC News. The population of Nova Scotia with a 2016 consensus is 923,598. The second most densely populated province in Canada, 17.4 inhabitants per square kilometer. The total area is 55,284 square kilometers, and it is one of Canada's three maritime provinces and one of the four provinces which form Atlantic Canada. It is the second smallest province of Canada's 10 provinces. Interesting fact right here, Nova Scotia translate to New Scotland in Latin. As of 2011, English is the number one ranking language in Nova Scotia by a percent of 92.46 and French ranking second spoken by a percent of 3.44. As per the 20, 2006 Canada statistics, the biggest ethnic group is Nova Scotia is Scotland, 31.9%, trailed by England, 31.8%. This is CBC News. The British acquired control of the locale somewhere around 1710 and 1758, setting up Halifax as the new capital in the year 1749. French colonists set up the first permanent European settlement in the year 1605 at Port Royal, which also became Acadia. The name Nova Scotia means New Scotland in Latin. Nova Scotia is ordered by a parliamentary government within the construct of the constitutional monarchy, Queen Elizabeth II. She looks pretty good in this picture. Which has executive, legislative, and judicial branches. Stephen McNeil. That's Steve Harvey. Stephen McNeil became the 28th Premier of the province Nova Scotia since Confederation. Premier McNeil was elected leader of Nova Scotia of the Liberal Party in 2007. Okay, now I'll just like end it. So we can do the arts, we should do like the arts in like the art gallery, you know, of like Noel. Because like it's the arts and stuff. But then we'll have to do it all and like we don't get time to like edit it and stuff. I mean it's only gonna this is CBC News. Nova Scotia isn't always perfect. A group of high school basketball players say they were left scrambling after the coach at a private school in Truro, Nova Scotia promised them scholarships, only for students to find out two weeks before school start started that there wasn't enough money. This isn't the first time Stephen Lalonde, who also goes by Jacques Lalonde, has left an athletics job amid questions over his business practices. CBC News has learned that the coach was convicted of embezzling funds from a football team in Vermont and there is a still, still a warrant out for his arrest. Lalonde denies any wrongdoing and told CBC News that allegations come from parrots on a witch hunt who are using him as a scapegoat. The family was told the school is a part of an elite basketball league in Canada called the National Preparatory Association, which has 13 teams across the country. Playing in the National Prep League, McNeil said, would offer her son exposure and connections he wouldn't get playing for a public school team. Lalonde, who started at Colchester Christian Academy in the summer of 2016, told the families that tuition, 4650 per year, and any game-related travel expenses would be paid for through corporate sponsorship, McNeil said. She and her son, Julius McGee, had no idea anything was amiss until they got a call from Colchester Christian Academy's new principal, Betty Johnson, two weeks before the start of the school year. She said that the basketball team program was no longer in existence and that all the money that they had said had, had not existed either. McGee, who dreams of one day playing in the NBA, was crushed. This is CBC News. 
Johnson, who could only speak to CBC via email, said while the school didn't conduct any official investigation, there was concern about Lalonde's lack of evidence around any sponsorship for the basketball team. The small amount of money that had been raised was offered back to the sponsors, she said, and the students' applications fees were refunded. Mr. Lalonde resigned just prior to the start of the school year, she said. However, there is no reason to believe that Mr. Lalonde took any funds from the school, either as a part of or outside of the basketball program. She didn't comment further on Lalonde's departure, citing confidentiality. This is CBC News. Catch you on the flip side. This is CBC News. I was definitely disappointed and I was definitely frightened, you know. I had dreamed of playing in the NBA. It all seemed so real when it really wasn't. It was all fake. This is CBC News.